You didn't know I had moves like that, did you, Arnold? Did you see that flip? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. I think I saw that on uh, Facebook, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're, we're back for another show. Uh, today we've got uh, Arnold Malloy with us. He's with Tamar Sales, uh, South Carolina State. Uh, Arnold and I had the chance to work together with the Fredericksburg Nationals as uh, they were launching their new stadium in, in uh, Virginia there, so it was a lot of fun. But thanks for joining me, Arnold. Uh, no problem, Andrew. Great to uh, catch up with you and uh, finally get on the, pod- on the uh, show here. I know I've been after you for a while, man. I was like, let's get you, <laughs> let's get you out here. So I'm glad it worked out. I know we're both, we both have been busy. We've, we've moved on to, to other, other ventures and yes. Um, and you know, it's, it's, uh, I know it's busy for me right now. So, but I'm excited to kind of get the show back and connect with people. It's, it was definitely a lot of fun when I started this during COVID when we were together back, back in Virginia, but mm-hmm. Tell everybody a little bit about your background, kind of some of the stops that you made along the way. Uh, sure. Uh, so I have been working in sports for about 13 years now. Uh, graduated from Delaware State University, uh, sports management background. Uh, kind of took the route of the, the minor league uh, baseball route here uh, over the years. So uh, I was had the pleasure of being in indie ball and with the Camden River Sharks uh, doing partnerships. Uh, it was probably one of my first stops. Uh, then I had an opportunity to go to Syracuse and uh, work for the Chamber for a short stint up there. Um, and then got back into sports, uh, working for the back then Syracuse Chiefs, now Syracuse Mets. Uh, I was there for about six years. And, uh, you know, a great person named Amy Venuto. I uh, reached out, got me a chance to. Uh, hey, she got, me. she brought me too. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> uh, got an opportunity to come down to uh, Fredericksburg to uh, direct your ticket sales, open up that new stadium there uh, during COVID. And, you know, had an opportunity now to connect with Tamar and, and come down to South Carolina State and enter the uh, college space. So, what did you think? You know, obviously, we both kind of went. Uh, to Virginia, not too far apart. I think I came a couple months after you, but like, what was really appealing to you and your family for that opportunity? Uh, I think uh, at that time it was, uh, you know, I was doing group tickets, uh, kind of hospitality for a very long time and wanted a new challenge. Uh, I think Fredericksburg opening up the new stadium uh, down there and uh, just with the the way minor league baseball has been creating a lot of opportunities. Uh, I think that, you know, the production and the vision uh, there in Fredericksburg was there and kind of wanted to come down and be a part of it. I remember when I came in, because it was like, you know, right right around the first or like, you know, right after the new year. And uh, you and the team were so busy because, like, the team was switching from Glitner to uh, to (laughs) Tigestock. Um, and, and that was, uh, man, that's a lot of work going from one system to the other. Were you, um, you were familiar with Glitner before with, with, uh, Syracuse or would you guys have up there? Uh, so I, I went through the same transition from Glitner to, uh, tickets.com. So, (laughs) so having that experience in, uh, Syracuse is definitely helpful, uh, coming down to Fredericksburg and, you know, believe it or not, when we first got down there, it was still dirt. Uh, where the stadium is now, and you know, you had your seating map inside of a remote office downtown in Fredericksburg, and people were coming in there. It was part team store, part sales floor, and uh, <laughs> you know, we were, we were selling the vision on on a map here of a seating chart. Yeah, it was. It was like a like like our office was like an old court uh, courtroom or something too, which was kind of cool and funny. Um, it was. Yeah, it, still had the still had the jail cells in the back. i you know what anytime you launch like a new team or or something like that i mean it's really about being able to sell the vision because there's nothing there to see and uh i just remember how good you know you and the rest of the sales team did with with producing numbers and getting getting um getting those seats sold and that transition took up so much time too. Um, and it's like a minor league level, you got to balance, 
you got to balance a million different hats. Um, but I definitely, I remember when I came in to, to meet with the family and, and Nick, the GM and, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're right. It was like, they were just like moving the dirt around and the game, the, the opener was like four months away or three, right. you know, not even four months. And like, it's like, there's no way this is going to be able to happen, but like everybody just kept doing their thing, pushing and, um, and then right before the season hit, COVID happens. Right. And, uh, it was, uh, that was a scary, I remember that. That was, that was scary. You know, I remember being in the office and the, you know, like the, when the NBA teams like walked off the, the court and like nobody knew what was going to happen. Right. Um, but even before COVID hit, I think some of the things that we started doing were pretty, I, I thought pretty cool. Like, I never really used Zoom a too too much before mm -hmm. then, but we started doing like Zoom tours and trying to do tours out at the stadium. Anything we could do to get people to see, like, hey, it's happening. Like, look, right. there's concrete being poured, and and uh, you know, I haven't been to the stadium since it opened, so I, I left uh, when it was maybe three quarters done, and it mm -hmm. it, it was looking like a, a beautiful ballpark, so. Uh, but I've been following the team and, and it looks like they've been doing, doing some good stuff. Um, so kind of tell me about this. So you went from minor league sports to now, like, you know, Tamar's, um, you know, a third party, but um, you're still in collegiate athletics. So like, what are some of the differences that, you know, you've had to adjust, um, you know, in your style or just, you know, knowledge transitioning from minor league to college? Sure. Uh, I think that the biggest difference, you know, Tamar is very uh, ticket heavy partnerships uh, with a lot of different universities. I think we're now at about 16, uh, some of the mid majors and, and larger um, programs like the LSUs of the world, the Kentuckys, UConn. Uh, then we have some mid majors, the Georgia States. And uh, I think now we're, we're at Jacksonville State. Um, so we're at some big schools. Uh, for me, the transition was, hey, uh, you know, here's a great opportunity to go to HBCU at South Carolina State with historic uh, tradition and legacy here. Um, and we want you to help assist with selling season tickets, group tickets, as well as sponsorship. So, um, you know, the sponsorship base is probably the most uh, area that probably needs the most focus on. Um, selling the vision, selling the brand a little bit more. Uh, so the transition was from a ticket perspective, uh, it wasn't that much different. Um, you know, selling the fun, selling the vision of the partnership when you have, you know, the Gamecocks down the road here, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely an opportunity to get a little piece of their pie, uh, you know, understanding your size and, and, and where you land in the, uh, in the, in the fish tank here. Uh, <laughs> well, I would think that's a big, a, that's a, a, a difference and, and a selling point, right? Not, you know, you don't have the the eyeballs or, you know, the facilities at SC State that, that South Carolina does, but you still have some great value and, and great right. opportunities for people. And, um, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, a market out there for all levels, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we went from, you know, minor league baseball, you have your 10, 6 to 8,000 seat stadium now to a 20 seat stadium and uh, had the opportunity to assess with bringing in a new scoreboard here. Uh, so oh, selling the inventory for football um, and, and pretty much the opportunity to look at the inventory that's here um, and developing some great partnerships with um some local as well as national companies uh, i think is one of the biggest transitions uh accomplishments that i would say uh, i've had here in the short two year span that i've been here so oh wow you, I, it, time flies time's flying we're uh we're got here in 2021 and in, in uh june of 2021 and and uh looking forward to uh what's to come here in 23 so well i I'm guessing you don't have to do like tarp or anything like that at the college level. I don't have to do tarp. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's still a uh, breakdown in, of uh, basketball now. So you have to put the chairs out and the uh, scores yeah. table, all that good stuff, but no tarp pulled during rain. So that's good. 
I'm glad I missed that. I've, I've heard stories about that. I hear some people like it, you know. I would be the guy that falls and then gets, like, trapped under there, and I would freak out because um, I'd be under the tar. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but, no, I mean, it sounds like, though, it's it's a lot like minor league sports where people are wearing multiple hats and you, you're kind of everybody's just kind of doing what they got to do to get things done. It is, uh, you know, South Carolina State from a staff perspective is, is a little bit smaller. Uh, so you definitely have your hands in a lot of opportunities for growth, uh, you know, similar to minor league baseball. But, uh, you know, the accountability uh, is definitely there. You only have about five home games to, you know, outside of, you know, when you look at it, you, you have to produce, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have 80 games, 72 games to uh, opportunities to produce. You have about five games for football, about 15 for basketball. So um, it's, it's primarily the, the the revenue generating sports here. So how are you liking um, like South Carolina, like just, you know, on the personal level, like out there, you like the area? Yeah, South Carolina is great. Uh, you know, Columbia has a lot to offer. Uh, Greensboro uh, is about uh, a few hours away. Charlotte's about two hours away. Then you have uh, Charleston here, uh, hour and a half away. So you have a lot of opportunities to uh, to travel, uh, see outside of you know what what South Carolina has to offer. And Myrtle Beach is about an hour and a half as well too. So that's not bad. Uh, any weekend you kind of want to get away. Um, you can. There's stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's stuff to do. No, that's cool. You know, uh, it's, not, it's not as many. It's, it's a lot more beaches uh, around here and nice sunny weather than the places I've been. So then they keep, <laughs> keep coming south. I mean, it's I was like, I'm going to sit outside this morning. It's a little chilly. I'm in St. Pete, uh, Florida, right. um, but it's just kind of like a nice morning. So I'm like, I'm going to sit out here and uh, enjoy the outdoors while I can. Um, yeah. before it becomes 200 degrees down here. Yeah. You know, Atlanta is two, is two and a half hours as well. Uh, so, you know, we played in our bowl game in 2021, our celebration bowl against Jackson State. So that was a great opportunity to be and a you part guys, of that. You guys knocked them off, right? They were undefeated. Yeah. And we did beat them. Uh, Just so, on off or what would you do? Uh, you yeah. <laughs> They gave us a little bit of motivation. You know, I gave our guys a little motivation. So we actually played them again uh, in uh, the MEAC Swag Challenge here in August uh, to start the season off in week zero. So uh, it's it's going to be a great opportunity to get back to Atlanta and and uh, see if, uh, you know, though Dion's not there anymore, but I think it'll still be a great game. What was the – like, Was I can't remember, but I was watching the highlights on that. Was that kind of a back-and-forth game? Uh, it was 31-10. Okay, yeah, so it wasn't a back and forth. <laughs> so so no. it, that was a beat down. Yeah, <laughs> that was, I think, you know, that, that's a surprise. That's that, yeah. See, you go to that's Colorado. The, right, right. That's one of the things about South Carolina State, you know, great tradition. Uh, majority of the student body is from South Carolina. So, uh, you know, a lot of the tradition and legacy, you know, the four NFL Hall of Famers we have here at the university, uh, you know, we have great tennis programs uh, so it's not just about football we have a lot of tradition and legacy here and i think that uh being here part of tamar we've uh, been able to expand that brand a little bit more and tell our story a little bit better so no it's good i've been following I, it, it looks like you're doing great stuff there so um keep that rolling what's the most memorable um moment for you um in minor league sports and then how about uh, with SC State as well? Marley Sports, uh, you know, Syracuse was probably, uh, you know, going in in 2014 with new management. Uh, you know, Jason Samara is a great GM and seeing his vision and being part of that growth to, you know, making a profit uh, for that organization and then having the Mets come in and uh, seeing the value and, you know, just seeing the the difference uh, of, of being able to impact the organization from a revenue standpoint, as well as a culture and uh, implementing the vision, I think it's one of the most impactful things. I can just go back there and see all the new hospitality areas and, uh, you know, just see that vision that we've worked so hard to get. So 
uh, South Carolina State, I think, you know, being here, I've had the opportunity to, because of my minor league knowledge, uh, impact so many different areas outside of tickets and uh, sponsorships. So, you know, being part of this team here, you know, seeing this new scoreboard go in, seeing the vision, uh, you know, it's kind of day and night as far as the game day experience. I think it's one of the biggest things I, I feel as though has been great for me here. Anything you miss about, you know, minor league baseball? Uh, I think the most, the probably, uh, you know, I've worked with some great teams, so obviously the people there, uh, you know, the, the promotions are a little different. Uh, you know, I try to travel my bobblehead collection here. Uh, so we have to uh, kind of work on our promotions a little bit. Uh, different foods is pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, the tarp pools, you know, after a while, you're going to let the, the interns kind of work that out a little bit more as you. Yeah, let me show you how to do this, guys. There you right. go. But... <laughs> <laughs> Hiding. Hiding on those days. Yeah, I'm gonna I got a, I got an appointment. I gotta run out. It looks like it's about to rain. Let me run up to the suites and see talk to one of our uh, that's that's partners. why I like indoor sports, right? You don't yeah. have to worry about the weather. Yeah. Because <laughs> I remember when I would come to Syracuse, we would uh our indoor soccer teams would play. It was the Syracuse Silver Knights back then. Yeah. And yep. uh, man, the weather, it just it was so cold. It's like how do how do people live? How did you live there? You gotta have a strong back. Uh, <laughs> you got a strong back to, to plow the snow, or you get a snow plower and and uh, you stay inside after a while. Yeah, it's like every time I went there, it snowed. I was like, man, this is this is miserable. It's fun to watch it on pictures and maybe see it once a year, but yeah, it was uh, good. But that was that was uh, you know definitely a fun uh, a fun market, you know, when yeah. I'd go up there. So. Is that um, – where did you grow up? What area? Uh, Philly is home for me. Oh, Philly, that's right, yeah. So, uh, you know, I try to get back. So I have family there uh, as much as I can. Uh, you know, so it's it's, uh, it's a little different now. But, you know, still, still have some great memories and and uh, cheer on my uh, Eagles now that are going to NFC uh, championship game. So we'll see how they do. So fun fact about the Eagles, their head coach – uh, Nick Sirianni played on my arena football team really? in 2005 wow. in Canton, Ohio, the Canton Legends. And uh, it's it's funny. He, he was just coming out of uh, Mount Union College then. And I, I grew up in, in Lancaster, PA, and everybody mm -hmm. around there is an Eagles fans and all. I hated the Eagles as a kid. I hated <laughs> them. I'm rooting for them now just because, like, it's kind of cool that, that uh, Nick, you know, was was part of uh our team there in canton and yeah and uh so it's always good to see like people um move on and move up you know just like yourself you know getting another opportunity to to go to the um you know a higher level um i mean that's really what it's about is you know helping and seeing people continue to you know develop and and advance so um you know, I'm always kind of rooting for for everyone. It's it's cool. I guess I'm getting old now because <laughs> a lot of people out there now, <laughs> right, 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 I've with over the years. But uh, no, it's it's really cool to see. So your Eagles, your Sixers, I'm sure Phillies, everything. So what's your favorite sport though? Uh, it has to be football. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's always been my passion. Uh, I think the atmosphere, obviously, when you want to go indoors, has to be uh, Sixers. You know, uh, Wells Fargo is uh, definitely a place to to have a great uh, experience at. You know, Phillies. You know, it's just it's just baseball. You know, you, you kind of go in. You know, you're going to be there for a few hours. Uh, it's going to be a good experience. Well, we have a former uh, Phillies player. Um, he's going to kick out the first ball in Tampa for my indoor soccer game uh, okay. team. Uh, this Sunday, um, uh, January 29th, it, uh, Matt Joyce. Who's okay. uh, so he's played a bunch of years in the, in the league and lives down in Tampa. So, uh, he's coming out, but, uh, another tie to Philly. Uh, <laughs> but, but I remember, I mean, you're, I don't know if you're old enough, but like, where did you ever go to the vet? I did. I did go to the vet. Uh, it was definitely an experience seeing, 
Randall Cunningham play there. And, and, uh, Ricky You're not Morris that old. You, don't, you, you didn't see Randall Cunningham play. You're not that old. I did. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> Were you one? I was young, but it was still I was still there. <laughs> yeah, man, he was exciting to watch. Like, and I just that's what I grew up going to is yes. you know Veteran Stadium, go see the the Phillies and the, the Eagles. Yeah, so I got my first actually first internship. You know, everyone has to have the internship to graduate, and it was with the Sixers, and I was there uh in 2010 when they tore down the old uh, spectrum. Mm. Uh, so being part of that and, and uh, you know, getting to see some of the the out the behind the scenes uh, process there and, you know, some of that sales staff is working in college sports now um, and kind of went on to different things and some branding opportunities. So I still try to stay in touch with that's the best thing about sports. You can stay connected with people over time and and, uh, you know, relate, build those relationships and be able to come on podcasts, uh, you know, <laughs> down the line. Well, thank God for LinkedIn, right? I mean, it's a great right. way to kind of stay up to date with, uh, with everyone in sports. And it's, you know, I mean, a lot of people, you have to, you have to move around a little bit to advance sometimes. Sometimes there's not opportunities within the, the uh, current organization and, right. um, you know, so you have to be able to, to move a little bit now. And it gets, it's tough. It's tough when you got a family too. Right. You know, right. I mean, we, uh, my, my kids are all, uh, 19 and 25 now. So, um, it's a little easier now, but when the, I know when they were younger, when we would move, it was, uh, it was, it was definitely tough. So, um, tough decisions right? You know, between family and, and, uh, um, work career. But, uh, um, sometimes you get lucky and you find that one spot that you could be in for a while. Um, but uh, more more often than none, you, you gotta you gotta jump around a little bit. Yeah, you know I have a young family, and uh, you know definitely weighing some options on location. Uh, what's what's the next move down the line? And and uh, I think we've we've uh, given them enough experiences now where they're always up for a challenge and want to get on the road. So that's cool. How? Because uh, you have uh, two girls, right? Two girls. Uh, they'll be eight. They'll be well. There's six and eight now there'll be nine and seven here in a few months so man how long ago were we working together <laughs> i mean that's crazy you, yeah you know enjoy that because i it's like a blink of the eye it feels like and like you know my daughter 25 now she lives in tampa mm -hmm. she's out on her own and it's like man you were just like a baby like it seems like yeah so Enjoy it. I, I lugged my kids all around. They've been in like every arena and stadium and, you know, <laughs> they just, at this point, they just expect uh, the perks and yeah. And else, so <laughs> wait, we're sitting in general population. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So what's kind of like your um, big, like career goal? Like what's your, what, where you really want to be, you know, in another 10, 15 years? Yeah, you know, I think I, I think I found my sweet spot here in the college space. Uh, yeah, I really like it here, and and uh, you know, working the way up to learn learning the the journey of being an AD. Uh, I can see myself <clears throat> uh, down the line here. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, in the, in the world of generating revenue for for uh, different universities along the way and building that community base. Um, it's something I feel passionate about. Uh, so, you know, writing the ship here and, you know, being able to impact some student athlete lives and, and uh, kind of grow in that space of, of college sports. Are you guys involved in any like the NIL things with Khalid? We are. We are. So I'm currently, you know, that's all, also one of the great things of working in the college space and, you know, learning the, the new NIL space and, you know, I'm currently working with uh, Influencer and Teamworks to launch our Bulldogs Exchange here uh, over the next month. Um, so being able to impact our student athletes and provide them more opportunities here um, is something that I'm excited about. Uh, we have some local partners here with uh, our Mercedes-Benz dealer here in Columbia, Dick Dyer. You know, we utilize one of their vehicles here for, uh, for uh, our uh, 
uh, National Letter and Tip Day. Guys came out. You get, is that they let they let you? No, that, well, that the deal, the deal, man, you not work that. Deal. You're doing the sales, man. What are you talking? How'd you not work the right. car in the deal for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they brought it down, and and uh, we took some pictures, and guys uh, will be uh, showing their their commitment videos and pictures here. Coming nice. Up, you know, That's a good with, idea. With some trophies, so. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a new trend. I'm glad we have a, a partner here that uh, you know w- wants to come out and and that uh, we can build that relationship and and uh, kind of make that experience a little little better for the student athletes. So that's that's a good idea, and I I, I like to see that uh, there's opportunities for the players to make some money now. I mean, it's I know that's such a hot topic, but it's like I mean that is that's the product. If they can go out and make money, right. Um, I think that's great. I mean, as a as an organization, um, you know, the way I look at it is if if the Mercedes dealer is sponsoring or other people are sponsoring, that's that's just going to help you know the university. And but it's it's really about value though too. I mean, right. these businesses see the value in that type of marketing, and so why why prohibit that? You know, it, it helps the the athlete. It, it helps the the business. Yeah. Uh, I get it. I mean, there's ways to manipulate that that rule and basically pay players in these bigger schools can go out and put a big fund together. And and so I, I get it. It makes it tough. But um, I think I think it's a, a good start anyway. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's not about just donations anymore. It's about showing the true value of, of uh, you know, HBCUs and, and South Carolina State and being able to build that impact, you know, have an impact and true partnership. So, yeah, well, man, it's been fun to, um, you know, follow your, your journey to South Carolina. And, uh, you know, I saw some of the posts from the, the, when you guys beat Jackson, uh, Jackson state. So, yeah. you know, keep up the good work though, man. It's it, you know, I can, I can see you're happy out there and, uh, you know, you're, you're progressing and, you know, you're going to get that next, uh, that next jump, I'm sure pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. And I, I appreciate uh, the, the, the relationship that we've been building and looking at your success and you guys are now in uh, North Carolina and was it Fayetteville? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have to uh, make a drive. Bring the family up there. Yeah. yeah. Come see a game. It's fine. Or come to Florida sometime. It's yeah, the floor, warm. Yeah. <laughs> Come for, come for the South is always better. <laughs> yeah. No, well, keep, keep in touch, man. It was, it was great uh, chatting with you. Likewise, man.